My name is Brother Ron Knight, and today with me is Brother Kevin Mills. Today we're going to discuss the Bible, but we're going to look at it as an overview. We're going to do a panoramic view of the Bible. Now, we don't have much time, but what we are going to do is explain what God has been doing in time past, what God is doing today, and what God is going to do in the future. That's what, that is what makes God's Word God's Word, because God has put in one book, the past, the present, and the future. So without further ado, Brother Kevin, would you start us off? Sure. Thank you very much. Um, as uh, Brother Ron mentioned, um, your Bible is actually broken out into a threefold division, time past, but now in ages to come. And the Apostle Paul lays that out in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 11, 12, for time past, verse 13, for the but now or the present, and verse 7 of Ephesians chapter 2, for ages to come. Okay. okay? So that's, that's important to know when you're reading your Bible, because you want to know where you're at in your Bible. Okay, Kevin, well, let's talk about time past. The Bible starts out in Genesis 1-1. It says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Mm -hmm. And what we're going to learn is that God had a purpose for the heaven and for the earth. Right. But the way the Bible is structured, from Genesis 1, chapter 2, and the earth was without form and void, God has been dealing with the earth. We're going to find out that God kept secret his heavenly purpose. Mm -hmm. And we're going to find out what that was later. But God created a man, Adam. He pulled a woman out of Adam, out of Adam's rib, Eve, right? Mm -hmm. God gave them instructions to be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. But God warned Adam. He gave him everything, but he said, Adam, do not eat of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Mm -hmm. Okay? And Kevin, let, let, let us know what, what Adam did after getting, that, after getting that command. Well, of course, as you know, uh, Adam uh, did not obey that commandment. Adam did eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. But God was not going to leave man alone. Right. Um, God promised uh, uh, that he would redeem man, okay? In Genesis 3. In Genesis 3, okay. okay? And so that is what God begins to do after uh, the fall is what happened, actually, with Adam and Eve in the, in the uh, Garden of Eden. God begins to set forth his plan and his purpose on how he's going to redeem mankind. And... Um, from Genesis to Malachi and from Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John in the early Acts period, the issue is God's purpose, plan and purpose of regaining the authority that was lost back over this planet. Okay. So, okay. So after Adam fell, God kicked him out of the garden. Right. Then the next thing on the scene is the flood. Right. The flood of Noah. Right. God chose Noah because... Noah found grace in the eyes of God. Mm -hmm. Noah was faithful to God. He right. believed God's word. He put Noah in the ark. He flooded the earth. All mankind was destroyed except Noah and his family, right. eight souls. Noah comes off the ark. God gives him new instruction. Mm -hmm. He says, you know what, Noah? He instituted human government. Mm -hmm. He says, Noah, if man spills man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed. And then he, he gave him new instruction. And right. he says, replenish the earth, the same instruction he gave Adam. Right. He says, be fruitful, multiply, and replenish the earth. But what happened after that? Well, what happened after that is, uh, again, man did not keep God's instruction. Mm -hmm. Instead of going out and scattering and replenishing the earth, mm -hmm. uh, man decided that he was going to build a city. Right. Um, and he did. He built a city called Babel, mm -hmm. and he built a tower. Right. And at that Tower of Babel, is uh, as Romans chapter 1 lays out for us, is where God gave man over to a reprobate mind. Mm -hmm. Because why? Man was, man was unthankful. He would right. not give God the glory. Right. Okay? Even though he knew God. God right. had revealed himself he to He did man. not like to retain God in his knowledge. So God See? gave him over. So God gave him over. Okay, so the next thing on the scene... God picks one man amongst these Gentiles. And by the way, at the Tower of Babel, God confuses the language. Mm -hmm, because right. he says if man had one language, they could do anything. Right. But God confused the language. That's where we get all the languages are from. Right. And those people with the same languages, they scattered throughout the earth. Right. They did what God had to make them do what he asked them to do in the first place. Right. 
So out of all of those humanity, all that, that mass of humanity, God still has that promise to bring that Redeemer. Mm -hmm. he, what did he do? He chose one man, right. Abram. Right. He says, Abram, leave. That's Genesis chapter, uh, I'm sorry, Genesis chapter 12, right. verse 1 through 3. I was going to say Genesis 3, but it's Genesis 12, 1 through 3. He says, Abraham, leave your father's house, go into a land that I'll show you. I'll make you a blessing. I'll make you a great name. Mm -hmm. And through you and your seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Mm -hmm. What God is doing now is getting a line for his, that promised redeemer, that Messiah we're going to find out to come through, right? Mm -hmm. right? Okay. So after Abraham, who comes on the scene? Well, with Abraham, God establishes that covenant known uh, as the Abrahamic covenant. And gives him a token. Okay. And of gives him a token of the covenant, which is circumcision. Okay. Okay. Now, that means that everybody born in Abraham's house was to be circumcised. Right. So as you know, Abraham had two sons, Ishmael, Ishmael and, Isaac. and Isaac. Isaac is the chosen one. He's the chosen seed. Right. Isaac has two sons, Esau and Jacob. And Jacob. Jacob is the chosen one. Okay. And then Jacob's name is to change to Israel. To Israel. And then Israel has 12 sons. Right. Okay. And through that line of the tribe of Judah, through right. Judah. One of the 12 sons. One Judah. of the 12 sons, sons is the line in, in actually which the Messiah or the Redeemer is going to come through. Okay. 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 So now, while after all of that, uh, and with God giving circumcision um, to the nation Israel, that, mm -hmm. that set up what Paul calls the middle wall of partition right. in Ephesians chapter 2, where, it, he, where God makes a distinction between those who are circumcised and those who are uncircumcised. Okay. And depending on what side of that wall of petition you were on, uh, if you were up here, if you were a Jew, uh, a Jew born of, of the nation Israel through Isaac, the promised seed, you were up here and you were able to get the blessing. You get the blessing. Right. Because you were circumcised. You were circumcised. If you were down here with Gentiles on the other side of the wall, um, you were cut off because you were not circumcised. Now, with that, God strengthened that. He strengthened that middle wall of partition. That's right. Because what he did promise Abraham was that Abraham's seed would go into a strange land, which is Egypt. Mm -hmm. The children of, of Israel went into Egypt with Joseph was there. You know, Joseph was one of their fathers. Right. One of the sons of Jacob. Right. Went into Egypt. They became a great nation in Egypt. God pulled them out with a mighty hand through Moses. Through Moses, right. Okay. And in, in Exodus chapter 19, God gives them the law of Moses. That strengthened that, that, that right. division. And not just 10 commandments, 600 and plus, 600 plus commandments. Right. All type of commandments, okay. Now, the next man that's on the scene is David. Mm -hmm. And God makes a, a covenant with David. Not only was he going to give him the land, he was also going to give him a kingdom right. in that land, right? Right. That's why he's called David the king. Mm -hmm. He promised him a throne. And in Luke 1, speaking of the Lord Jesus Christ, God says that he would sit on the, the throne of his father David. Right. That's why when he was, um, when people spoke to him, they said, thou son of David. Mm -hmm. Okay? Well, in our, in our move through the Bible, we come to the ministry of John the Baptist and the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. Mm -hmm. And Kevin, could you tell us about John the Baptist? Sure. Um, <laughs> John the Baptist, uh, as you know, is the forerunner of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's gone. To, he's he, J John the Baptist is that person who was going to come to prepare the way and make straight the path for the Lord. Yes. Okay. So John the Baptist comes on the scene and he begins to preach this gospel of the kingdom. Okay. That that promised kingdom. That that promised was at kingdom hand. was at hand, and right? The, and the promised king, the Messiah. Right. The kingdom of the kingdom is at hand. Okay. Because the king is here. Yes. Okay. Right. The king of the kingdom is here, and John the Baptist goes and he begins to baptize Israel, preparing them to receive that kingdom. Because God said they would be a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. Right. And they had to be washed. Under the law of Moses, right. the priest must be washed right. and then anointed with oil. And later we're going to see that anointing was a type of the Holy Spirit anointing that the nation of Israel would get. Right. And they're going to get it here. Right. And we're, going to get, we're going to talk about that. Because something happened. The Lord ministered for three and a half years, yet Israel rejected him. Mm -hmm. Now, if Israel is the promised seed back there in Genesis, and through Israel, through Abraham and his seed, through Israel, the rest of the world, the Gentiles are to be blessed because God didn't forget about the Gentiles. He just put them aside. Right. He was going to bless them through Israel. But if Israel didn't receive